G'day, welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph. And today we are going to talk a little bit about marriage when we read the scripture in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 27 to 32. Uh, and uh, in my New King James Bible, it's uh, titled the Adultery in the Heart. Right? So let's jump in and read the scripture and then I'm going to give you a few comments. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for, uh, for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Okay, so that's Matthew chapter 5 from verse 27 to 32. When God created man, he set a foundation, a moral foundation for all of mankind to thrive on. Right? The the nations on the earth that chose to say, yes, Lord, we're going to build on that moral foundation is thriving, is doing well, is financially doing well, is culturally doing well, has the lowest levels of crime in their countries. Then in countries where people choose to reject the moral foundation that God has given to us as a society, those people usually have the highest crimes, they have the highest levels of poverty and struggle in their nations. All they see around them is calamity and war and murder. Right? And so one of the foundations that God put into place into our civilization is that of marriage. Therefore, marriage is very important. You find uh, even in mar uh, 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 um, societies where the foundations are falling apart marriage is still a very very important part of that society every society has very strict r uh, rules how the government will affirm that you are indeed married and then of course if there is the, a divorce how that divorce takes place all right lots and lots of thousands of court cases has been made all over the earth about this issue all right and so therefore marriage is foundational to who we are as a people now it's important for you to realize we can't say there's a modern cultural way of viewing marriage in comparison to but these god's way of marriage marriage was instituted by the lord and so therefore there's really only one form of marriage and that's God's form. Some of the other forms that is called marriage is not marriage at all. It's not marriage anymore. It was never instituted by God. It was twisted by the enemy, but they still call it marriage, but it's not marriage. Right? Uh, and so therefore, I don't have to go into any of those formats that is not found in the Bible, because according to God, that is not the original plan and the purpose for marriage. Okay? So what is marriage? Marriage is when a man leaves his father and mother's house and he cleaves to his wife they get married usually they do a ceremony before the mother and father the the function of the ceremony is to honor the parents and to receive the blessing from the parents marriage is between one man and one woman right if the two of them by themselves can procreate that means they can have children then they qualify to be in that marriage okay or if they have the potential to procreate okay so um marriage is exclusive between that man and that woman marriage is for life marriage is never to be uh, violated until the day you die that means each partner in a marriage 
according to God's original plan is supposed to stay faithful to one another, especially when it comes to the area of intimacy. The Lord requires both the man and the woman to have that intimacy exclusively just between the two of them. Right? Um, the, the other thing about marriage is marriage is not just a physical relationship, but marriage is spirit and soul and body. Marriage, therefore, then, is when we talk about our faithfulness, is then also spirit, soul, and body. All right? The Lord actually says it like that. Is when you get married, you actually become one flesh. All right? Now, when two people become married and they have intimacy together, then their spirit becomes to the Lord as one person. So when the Lord looks at me and my wife, Claire, he sees there's Joseph and Claire as a one person. All right? the, and then what happens as the years go on and we love each other and we're interested in each other, we start to think each other's thoughts, she thinks, she knows what I'm thinking, I know what she's thinking. And so there's a oneness that comes even in our soul. And then of course there is the oneness in our intimacy, in our physical bodies. There's no shame between the two of us. We l love each other unconditionally all right so that's the marriage and so that's also the union now whenever a person do anything that caused that unity to be disrupted then that is the start of idolatry all right and and in essence what the lord says jesus was talking to these guys and uh, uh in a in a time of the of when jesus was on earth um what the the rabbis did they went back to where uh, Moses and Deuteronomy issued people papers of divorce if they wanted to get divorced and what they did they gave the men so much right to for any women have a divorce but the women literally didn't have a way to have a divorce in essence doesn't matter what he did all right so uh, there was an example of a Jewish man he didn't like the way his wife prepared breakfast and then he had breakfast at his neighbor and he loved the way his wife prepared breakfast and on the grounds of the taste of the breakfast he divorced his wife all right so it means they would divorce their wives on any matter and so jesus says no it is not so you cannot divorce your wife wives you can't divorce your husband and then he said he's going to give them a structure and that structure was when you read in a scripture it says you cannot divorce your wife other than on one thing and that is sexual immorality okay now when we look at sexual immorality and you go and look at that root words in essence it includes two things number one it includes adultery that means if that man sleeps with another woman or if that woman sleeps with another man then there is grounds for divorce number one number two if there is physical abuse, then there is grounds for divorce uh, by that man from the woman or the woman from the man, if they abuse each other. And really, that is the only two grounds for divorce. But I want to tell you, if you walk in God's ways and you never even allow that thought to come up in your mind to lust after another man or after another woman, then you will never go to that point of abuse and of sexual immorality and there should theoretically be never divorce between a man and a woman all right and so that is the that is the kingdom that is the the joy uh, that is the the gift of god that is the original design that god has set out for us in the kingdom of god all right um I want to encourage the men love your husband your, your wife and take good care of her all right show love to her in a way that she will experience love all right then husbands yeah, uh, then women love your husband and show love to him in a way that you will receive that love and just do not allow that thought of lust for another to ever come into your mind whenever it comes 
just bring it before the Lord, come face the decision, let him wash it clean with the blood of Jesus. If your your husband abuse you, or in the rare case, maybe the, the wife abused the husband, but if your husband abuse you, then immediately bring that before the elders, bring that before the council, so it can be dealt with. Don't give it to one in, uh, um, in the room um, in your life. You know, if you have to go, uh, go to the court, make a make a case and say, my husband abused me uh, and this is what happened. All right. So that you can stop that abuse. It's better to do that and to save your marriage than to live an uh, unhappy marriage of abuse uh, or in the instance of a, of a husband, sometimes they have a, a marriage that's loveless without any intimacy. All right. Make sure that you guys figure out a way how to stay together, how to love each other, and uh, how to build each other's love banks. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for the institution of marriage that you have given to us. And Lord, that you so clearly speak to us in the scripture that it's not only just about the, that deed of adultery that we should not commit, but it's really with our spirit, with our soul, and our body. We should not even allow a thought of sin to enter into our marriage, but we should love our spouse as we love ourselves and lord i pray now lord for each one that's listening a lot of uh, people struggle in their marriage lord i pray lord that you'll give them the answer help them bring healing reconciliation lord bring back love and kindness tenderness between one another lord restore intimacy between husbands and wives uh, and lord uh, where we are lord rise us up to be a voice for truth uh, a voice for what it really means to be uh, married uh, for uh, purity in marriage uh, lord you've never intended for us to sleep with any person outside of marriage and lord we sorry if we have done it and you wash us clean by your blood but lord we commit to walk before you holy and pure and to fulfill your original design and plan for us as a church as a community and as a people lord we we give you honor and praise. And so, Lord, I, I bless each one that's listening. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll heal their marriage, bless them in their marriage, make them fruitful um, and productive so they can stand as a gate to bring heaven to earth. Lord, I bless them in their finances, in their health, and also in their thoughts. Lord, give them the wisdom of God in the name of Jesus. God bless you.